Welcome to our podcast series, Inside Semicon. And in today's episode, we will be discussing how the Semicon industry is helping to modernize logistics. We are featuring a special guest who will tell us more about her take on Semicon logistics and what has changed in the past. Good morning. Um, I'm your host for today, Tom Mildersh. Um, I'm here with two people this time. So I'll give the word to John and uh, then to Renata. Thanks for having me again, Tom. So good to be back. Um, so for those of people who don't know yet, my name is John Desmond. I'm the subject matter expert on Semicon with Kuna Nagel. And over to you, Renata. Hey, my first podcast. I'm Very so good. excited. There you uh, go. And so um, my name is Renata. So I'm currently working as a global sales standard manager for Semicon and Healthcare. So I'm very excited to be here today and share some insight and experience with you guys. So thank you. Thank you again. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. So Renata, tell us a little bit more about yourself, about your background. Okay. So I'm Brazilian. Mm -hmm. So I started in Cunanago, Brazil in 2011. So I have been always working sales. So focusing on customer development and customer retention. So basically, um, managing tenders, uh, monitoring performance, also um, working on s some uh, process improvement projects mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, and um, I, I then, so I started, I stayed in Curanago, Brazil for seven years. Uh, then I moved to Chile um, okay. and then I stayed there for four years. So, but uh, my focus there was a little bit different than in Brazil. So in Brazil, I was much more focused on the healthcare sector. Mm -hmm. And then in, in Chile, it was a mix. So I was concentrated on healthcare and also consumer. And then there was an opportunity to come to Europe. So to move to Hamburg. Uh, now I am in Hamburg for two years already. And um, and in here in Hamburg, I had the opportunity to start and uh, work on some Semicon uh, I think projects. That's, that's where we first yeah. met when we got involved with Semicon. Exactly. Okay. Two yeah. years ago. Two years so, ago. Semicon Europa it was. Yeah yeah. 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 So good. So, yeah. And then, so... And then I have been working with John in some Semicon projects, um, like, I mean, tenders for sure, but mm -hmm. also in portfolio management and... Um, development, also governance. And yeah, I think it was a great experience to understand much more about the industry. So because initially my my knowledge was pretty basic. Yeah. So, yeah. and John was like a mentor. Uh, he could uh, give me another perspective and amplitude how the industry uh, really is. Because I knew about uh, microchips uh, that silicon was... I mean, is a major yeah, element. Yeah, of everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, the engineers wearing the uh, white the bunny white. suits, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, working in the cleaning rooms. This is what I knew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but then, um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I had the opportunity to attend the Semicon Europa with yeah. you, John, so I could understand much more about the the entire ecosystem, So, which was, I mean, a great experience to to um, to see how sophisticated and detailed the manufacturing process is, so exactly. And uh, I also um, had the opportunity to work in tenders uh, with um, f for subfabs and yeah. also for the the equipment manufacturers, yeah. and it was a different experience, different requirements. So uh, I think this industry requires a lot of specialization. Mm -hmm. And I think during those two years, I have been learning a lot. So, and I think that's one of the things that we were talking about as well earlier on was, you know, how does this, how is it affected? And certain time may have, we still have, and we've had many discussions about the semicon industry and how it has changed the project management, the RFQ, the tender process. Because as you mentioned, the ecosystem is quite complex. It's mm -hmm. not just a matter of shipping product from A to B, Tom. Yeah. It's, it's not just brown boxes. <laughs> No, it's not just brown boxes moving from A to B. It, it is quite, um, you know, an intricate part of the of the logistics supply chain. And we've had to actually, you know, and I think you would have seen this more, Renata, we've had to actually step up our game in terms of what we can provide to customers. And I suppose that's something we discussed, Tom, as well, was how do we, you know, get ourselves prepared for the next gen of devices, the next gen of processes, because they're continually evolving. And it's something that we need to continually look at. And while myself and Tom, you know, have discussed it at a high level, it's good to have someone like yourself here because you probably see firsthand exactly, 
you know, how that has changed over the last two years since we first started working together on Semicon. So for you, how do you think that that has evolved in two years? Have you seen a change in the knowledge you've had to correlate and correlate to allow you to put tenders together? Yes, uh, yes, John. So uh, I think so the the entire ecosystem is so complex mm. and there's a um, hundred types of requirements like temperature control, uh, like you need, you need yeah. to uh, be Light aware. exposure is another one. Yeah. That's a good one that's coming up in a lot recently. So temperature, humidity control. Humidity control as well. Vibration. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So safety is also something yeah. very important. So I think th uh, during those two years, I, I could... Um, yeah, I have been working for healthcare for a long, but uh, I I could see that as as healthcare um, in a different perspective. But Semicon um, has its own requirements, high quality standards, mm -hmm. and and also we need we need to provide a special care. And this is why I think during those two years, I I think that with all the investments that the industry is mm -hmm. it's doing right now, so. For example, here in Europe, they want to expand a lot, so and um, invest in a lot of manufacturing companies. Yeah, yeah. So we we there is a lot. So it's um, I think it's um, I think Semicon is the um, it's it's a modern technology that we um, that we need to focus. So. What I'm curious about is is your healthcare background, right? You have quite an extensive background in healthcare. Um, has that helped you to understand the semicon industry um, quicker than others? Maybe I think so. Yeah. I think so, Tom. Because I mean, for sure, semicon um, has its own requirements. Um, it's it's different, so it's high value cargo, very sensitive. But I mean, in also in healthcare, there are a lot of standards, and then this for sure helped me a lot to to I mean to to connect and, and contribute more to, 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 to all projects that we have been involved, I think. So. Yeah. Okay. And John, what, in your opinion, what has changed significantly in the last, say, two, three years? For me, I think in my personal opinion, what, I, what has changed is the amount of, like Renata said it earlier, the requirements are getting you know, more and more, they're getting tighter and tighter, not only from a security point of view, um, but also from an insurance point of view, because uh, a lot of this cargo, you know, is basically high value, not just the equipment itself, the CapEx going in could be worth, you know, say, let's say anything from 1 million to 150 million, but the finished goods are actually worth a lot of money as well. So you, you basically would have, you know, um, say a pallet of, of uh, microprocessors moving around. That, that pallet is worth a lot, a lot of money. So the the security aspect of it, the insurance aspect of it is something that we've had to also come back on and revisit to understand, you know, what kind of insurance do we need and, and what's the best route? Because that also affects the actual logistics supply chain. You know, do we want to be going through areas, you know, where it's a slow moving truck, there's a possibility the truck has to actually pull in overnight. Uh, you know, is there a guarded um, location for that truck to go to as an, as an example? So the, the security element of it, the, secu the insurance element of it, um, you know, is something that has really come to the forefront. I mean, and I think, John, yeah. I, the industry has seen the emergency to have um, specialized providers, right? Yeah, to correct. understand yeah. the unique aspects of the yeah, industry exactly. as well. So high value, all the risks that we yeah. have during the transportation. So I think... I, we we need specialized uh, providers, so insurance providers, to, mm. to support our customers, and policies should be tailored as well to, to correct, those yeah, to yeah, those yeah. risks. I think. So. I think what I see with with my customers is that they also expect a certain level of professionalism within the semicon industry. Right? They expect you to have not only the experience but also the knowledge of their products, and also to. Um, you know, provide an option B, C, and D if at the moment they request it, right? Mm -hmm. And, and Tom, this is this is something uh, that I realized when I was in Semicon Europa. So what is what was interesting was, I mean, to see in person, you know, the equipment yeah. and everything. And uh, I mean, it was like a real eye opener for me. And uh, but not only to see the huge machines. Mm -hmm. But also uh, all the materials and tools behind of it, so to 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 that contributes to the manufacturing process, and I think 
it's, um, I think we need to understand the product. So, and then I, there I could feel more connected and I could, and I thought, okay, I can contribute more. And I, I, um, especially so how I, how we can provide different solutions and alternatives to our customer. Because when you, you see the product, you know, this, they are sensitive, high value, they require some, some part, some specifications. And then that's, uh, I think it's good that when you, Real see, you physically see, see it. Yeah. I think that was that's one of the things as well that that kind of a lot of logistics, you know, providers but people in logistics need to be aware. It's good to visit these fairs. It's good to understand what you're shipping because when you physically see it, as you said, the ecosystem goes from shipping fluids and substrates um, to you know devices that cut up the dye, you know, f- actually physically rotating devices to devices that are you know um, you know bending e beams around circles. So by physically seeing that. It puts your mindset into a different, uh, how to say, avenue. Because then you suddenly have to kind of go, well, actually, what I'm shipping is not just a box, but it's what's in the box, and this is why it is so important to have a, you know, a dedicated supply chain for Semicon. And for, I think for me, that was also kind of tie in nicely with the fact that when we do have a an RFQ, I think for a Semicon is probably a bit longer. Again, you'll be the mm-hmm. expert around on this, but I think that the the Semicon. RFQs and project management of that would probably be longer than a regular, say, shipping, you know, T-shirts or, or, or consumer goods, you know, runners or... or, or no, so absolutely. On. We need to evaluate different aspects, mm-hmm. um, not only, I mean, the transportation part in terms of moving to A to B, but also the um, quality uh, standards that customer requires, all the um, specifications in terms of product like temperature control, um, physical, I mean, we need to provide uh, different solutions like physical monitoring, for example, to to prevent um, any kind of um, a situation and we have more visibility. Yeah. So um, it's, we need to really understand, so that's why see the product and understand everything. So it helped me a lot, I think, uh, yeah. to work on the tenders and Again, I think this this sector requires a lot of specialization, and I think that um, the more that I learn and more that I experience different scenarios during the mm-hmm. tenders. So, because one requires some speed, some uh, so you need to to send like quickly. The depending on the they require a specific transit time. And some of them, temperature control, other DGRs. So yeah. we have gases as well. So yeah. ISO tanks that we need to also um, uh, provide any kind of a solution. So that's why I think um, requires a different analysis. So that's yeah. why a pre- preparation, it's a, a very important topic. Uh, so we need to be prepared to the tenders for sure before. And yeah, it. In be- by becoming an expert, mm. I think we stay more competitive as well, and we can also provide a, uh, um, a offer with more quality. Because so. I think yeah, and the offer, for instance, mm. like because again, like myself and Tom were like you know again talking about this on the car right here, so it's quite hot here today, you know, in in, in the Netherlands, and I was you know just kind of re- rethinking about um you know a, a story that when you ship from. Let's just take, there's a, a microprocessor manufacturing company in Ireland and they were moving products from Ireland in the summer. Irish summers would not be, you know, particularly warm to say a location in Arizona. You could have a 30 degree centigrade difference from point A to point B. So when you're looking at that from an RFQ point of view, you didn't have to understand that if this is moving from point A to point B, it's a microprocessor, then there's a 30 degree difference. That is the reason why you, yeah. then we would have to suggest back to the company, to the customer, well, yeah. you will need temperature control because of this reason. But then as you said, Renata, if you didn't understand the actual ecosystem and how this works, you would not think about something as simple as a temperature difference of X or Y, Z. So you have to actually also be prepared to understand I'm shipping in the summer, or I'm shipping in the winter, yeah. mm-hmm. and how this affects, therefore we have to recommend temperature controlled, you know, ULDs Root, for instance. Different routes, routes and exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So what do you think is going to change in the next, say, five years? In terms of, well, in terms of microprocessors or in terms, sorry, in terms of the semiconductors, the logistics? Right. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I've had a crystal ball and then I would have bought shares <laughs> in NVIDIA a long time ago. But it's, um, 
it really is it's a continually I say changing environment that we're that we're dealing with and we it's also going to come out of left field the requirements but I think from from your point of view Renata it's probably changing continually as well but how do you see that well I think for sure as as we mentioned before insurance they will become I mean it's a, it's it's key so I I think the industry requires some specialized providers also, I think um, control environment. So, in terms of, I mean, personnel that um, knows how to handle. So, all the containers and vehicles that needs to, you know, have this climate. I mean, this this is something that we need to um, uh, focus in terms of um, because we need to provide this special care to the customer. And I think so. Enhance also the protection. Mm-hmm. Um, like packaging, I think, as I think we were discussing here before. So these, I mean, new new um, seals and yeah. new uh, tracking devices. That tracking devices, yeah. correct. So I think this is going to change. Uh, and I mean, technology will uh, is moving fast yeah. and changing. So I think we will see also some different, um, yeah, aspects on this. I think one of the things that we, we've, we've touched on before is the fact that not only do you have like temperature, humidity control, which is kind of standard for most electronic devices, but then with Semicon, you'd have light, light exposure. Certain of the substrates that we, that we ship for an adder, for instance, they can't be exposed to light. So we have to measure that. But then we have the tilt and the, and the, and the crush watches, but now we actually have the, like we have X, Y, and Z, you know, the, the tilt and yaw within, you know, the, the particular transport mode that it's leaving on. So we have to measure that as well. And in some cases it even goes to the G force and we have touched on this and this is probably for a f- future podcast and how we track these devices. But for me, I think go back to the previous question, Tom, on, on where we're going here, it's like G force even, you know, uh, is something on, on takeoff and landing, especially in yeah. the air that um, we might find in the future as the machines get bigger to produce smaller chips then we're suddenly faced with um, that the moving parts there that, you know, even G-Force could actually upset um, the uh, the device inside that we're shipping. So I think those elements as well and vibration, because once you do land, you still got to get the product from the airport to the factory, to the location. So then you're putting it on a, a truck. Regular yeah, truck. Regular away. truck. But so <laughs> then, yeah, that won't do it. That won't cut it. <laughs> yeah. So then we have air ride trucks. Exactly. But, but then I'm sure... As time goes on, we're going to have to improve that as well with a new form of suspension or a new, new you know, inertialess movement that can actually allow the truck to rotate going around corners or, or you know, coming to stop suddenly or whatever. So I think that's also going to be a continual development of the of the supply chain that we provide. But then, on the flip side of it as well, we also have to understand how we we move this along in terms of um, our basic, you know, what we can provide, what we can provide. But that's where it's so important as well to work with the customer during these RFQs to really understand the ones and zeros of what they need. Um, it's not just a box moving from A to B. You know, it's, yeah. it's too valuable for that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, I want to thank you again for coming today, uh, Renata. Really enjoyed your uh, thank you for your presence. Uh, thanks again, John, for joining. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, we'll see everybody next time. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, Inside Semiconductors and the Semiconductor Supply Chain. If you found any of the topics we discussed interesting and you want to find out more, you can find me on LinkedIn at John Desmond or go to Kuhn & website. 